Hey, uh, this is uh, the morning NFT uh, talk or talk to MMT. Um, I, I, I kept one. I, I kept uh, thinking about the the talking point of China's uh, loaning uh, the U.S. Uh, money. Then I, I look it up and I'm like, okay, let me just kind of see how does China uh, loan loan the United States money, right? So. I see I find an article on chinapower.csis.org and it's entitled Is it a risk for America that China holds over 1 trillion in US debt? Many worry that China that China's ownership of American debt affords the Chinese economy leverage over the United States. This apprehension, however, stems from the misunderstanding of sovereign debt and of how states derive power from their economic relations. Now, MMT basically uh, is, uh, when I, th I heard something, I think uh, Warren Moser at one point in time, like, was Mo Warren Moser, maybe it was Stephanie Chelton, I think it was Stephanie Chelton said that someone had told her, the only thing that we owe China is a bank receipt. And I think this article pretty much sums up that exact thing. Just listen, hold on. Uh, un misunderstanding of the sovereign debt actually is a talking point to get votes by the by the conservatives, Republicans and Tea Party and, uh, and the like. Anyway, and actually some moderate to uh, Republican in name uh, and to Democrats as well that are more moderate to conservatives. Anyway, uh, misunderstanding of uh, sovereign debt and of how states derive power from their economic relations. The purchase of sovereign debt by foreign countries is a normal transaction that helps maintain openness in the global economy. Consequently, China's stake in America's debt has been more of a binding than dividing effect on bilateral relations between the two countries. Even if China wishes to call in its loan, the use of credit as a co uh, cohesive measure is co complicated uh, and often heavy constrained, heavily constrained. The creditor can only dictate terms for the debtor country if that debtor has no other options. In the case of the United States, American debt is widely held and extremely desirable asset in the global economy. Whatever debt uh, China does sell is simply purchased by other countries. For instance, in August of 2015, China reduces holdings of U.S. Treasuries by approximately 180 billion. Despite the scale, the sell-off did not significantly affect the U.S. economy, thereby limiting the impact that such an action may have may have on the U.S. decision making. Furthermore, China needs to maintain significant reserves of U.S. debt, or in other words, keep money in a Federal Reserve as a, as a savings account. Uh, U.S. debt to manage the exchange rate of the uh, of their currency. Where China is suddenly unload, uh, where China to to suddenly unload, um, it reserves holdings. See reserve a check a uh, savings account. Its currency exchange rate would rise, making China exports more expensive in foreign markets. As such, China's holdings of American debt um, is do, uh, debt do not provide China with undue economic influence over the uh, United States. Why do countries accumulate foreign exchange reserves? Any country that trades openly with other countries is likely to buy foreign, debt, uh, foreign sovereign debt. In terms of economic policy, a country can have any two, uh, wait, can have any two but not three of the following uh, a fixed exchange rate, an independent monetary policy, and a free capital flows. Foreign exchange debt provide, uh, sorry, foreign sovereign, sovereign debt provide countries with means to pursue their economic objectives. The first two uh, functions are monetary policy cho choices performed by a country's central bank. First, foreign debt frequently comprises a part of other countries' foreign exchange reserves. Second, central banks buy sovereign debt as part of a monetary policy to maintain the exchange rate or forestall economic instability. Third, as a low risk store of value, so sovereign debt is attractive to central banks and other financial actors like, uh, alike. 
Each of these functions will be discussed briefly. Okay, yeah, again, I'm reading off of the page, so there you go. Um, foreign reserves. Any country open to international trade or investment requires a certain amount of foreign currency on hand to pay for foreign goods or investments abroad. So as, so, uh, as a result, many countries keep foreign currency in reserve to pay for these expenses, which cushion the economy from sudden changes in international investment. Domestic economy, economic uh, policies often require central banks to maintain a reserve adequacy ratio for foreign exchange and other reserves for short-term internal debt. And, and to ensure a country's ability to serve uh, service its uh, in internal short-term debt in a crisis. The Internal Monetary Fund publishes guidelines to assist governments in calculating ab appropriate levels of foreign exchange reserves given their economic conditions. Exchange rate, a fixed or paid exchange rate, is a monetary policy decision. This decision attempts to minimize the price's instability that accompanies volatile capital flows. Such uh, conditions are expected, uh, especially, excuse me, uh, especially apparent in emergency um, emerging markets. Argentinian ex uh, imports price increases of up to 30% in 2013 led opposition leaders to, do, to do describe wages as water running through your fingers. Those are quotes. Uh, since price volatility is economically and politically destabilizing, policymakers manage exchange rates to mitigate change. Internationally, few countries' exchange rates are completely floating or determined by current markets to manage domestic currency rates and country and oh sorry, a country might choose to purchase foreign assets and store them for the future when the currency might depreciate too quickly. A low risk store of value, as the sum of debt is uh, government backed uh, private and public financial institutions view it as a low risk asset with a high chance of repayment. Some government bonds are seen as riskier than others. A country's external debt may be viewed as unsustainable relative to its GDP or, in, or its reserves or a country could otherwise default on its debt. Generally, however, foreign debt is more likely to return value and therefore is safer, is, is safer relative to other forms of investment, even if earned interest is, too, is not high. Why does China buy U.S. debt or invest in basically just like, yeah, invest in the U.S. as far as, as, far as the treasuries through trade? Um, China buys U.S. Ch China buys U.S. debt for the same reasons other countries buy U.S. debt, with two caveats: the crippling 1997 Asia financial crisis prompted Asian economies, including China, to build up foreign exchange reserves as a safety net. More uh, specifically, China holds large exchange reserves, uh, which were built up over time due to uh, due in part to persistent surpluses in current accounts to uh, inhibit cash inflows from trade and investment form destabilizing the domestic economy. China's large U.S. Treasury holdings say as much as uh, much about U.S. power in the global economy as any particular, uh, particularly uh, yeah, okay, uh, of the Chinese econo economy. Broadly speaking, U.S. debt is, a, is an in-demand asset. It is safe and convenient as the world's reserve currency. The U.S. dollar is ex extensively used in international transactions. Trade goods are priced in dollars, and due to its high demand, high demand, high demand, the dollar can easily be cashed in. Furthermore, the U.S. government has never defaulted on its debt. Despite U.S. debt's attractive qualities, continued U.S. debt finances has concerned economists who worry that a sudden stop in the capital flows to the United States could spark a domestic crisis. Thus, the U.S. reliance on debt financing would present challenges, not if demand from China were halted, but if demand from all financial actors suddenly halted. 
from a regional perspective, Asian countries hold on an unusual large amount of U.S. debt in response to the 1997 Asian, cri uh, Asian crisis, uh, financial crisis. During the financial, uh, uh, Asian financial crisis, Indonesia, Korea, uh, Korea, Korea, Malaysia, and the Philippines and Thailand saw incoming investments cash crash to an estimated 12.1 billion from, 90, from 93 billion or 11 percent of their combined uh, pre-crisis. In recent, uh, in response, China, Japan, Korea, and South and Southeast Asian uh, nations maintained large precautionary rainy day funds of foreign exchange reserves, which, for safety and convenience, include U.S. debt. These, okay, so again, it's not U.S. debt; it's U.S. Treasury bonds. It's it's yeah, it's, it has nothing to do with borrowing or anything of that nature. It's when they trade that uh, the United States pays. Uh, China and uh, China and our currency, they then uh, exchange it for their own currency to use in their own uh, um, uh, in their own markets. Or actually, no, I just read that may keep that as uh, on as reserves. So it's not like they're buying uh, our debt or anything else like that. They're literally buying goods from us and or we're selling them goods and they're keeping our currency as a reserve. It, just in case, I suppose. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, largely precautionary rainy day funds, foreign exchange rate uh, reserves, which for safety and convenience include U.S. debt. I hate that word debt. It's not a debt. It's not something that you have to pay back. It's something they can cash out as an investment. Uh, these policies were vindicated post-2008 when Asian co economies boasted a relatively speedy recovery. From a national perspective, a perspective, China buys U.S. debt due to its complex financial system. The central bank must purchase U.S. treasuries and other foreign assets to keep cash inflows from causing inflation. In the case of China, this phenomenon, this phenomenon is unusual. A country like China, which saves more than it invests domestically, is typically an inter uh, international lender. To avoid inflation, the Chinese central bank removes this incoming foreign currency by purchasing foreign assets, including U.S. Treasury bonds in a process called sterilization. This system has the disadvantage of generating unnecessarily low returns on investment by relying on FDI. Uh, Chinese firms borrow from abroad at higher interest rates. Yes, they borrow, uh, while China continues to lend. To foreign entities of low interest rates, this system also compels China to purchase foreign assets, including safe, convenient U.S. treasuries, not debt. Savings. Um, who owns the most U.S. debt? Around 70% of U.S. debt is held by us. We own the debt. We own the investment. Um, let's see, uh, held by domestic financial actors and institutions in the United States. U.S. Treasuries represent a convenient, liquid, low-risk store of value. The, uh, quality, uh, these qualities, yeah, qualities make it attractive to diverse financial actors from central banks looking to hold money in reserve to, to private investors seeking a low-risk asset in, in a portfolio. For all of all U.S. domestic public actors, intra-governmental holdings, including Social Security, hold over a third of U.S. Treasury securities. The, the Secretary of the Treasury is legally required to invest Social Security tax revenues in, so, in U.S. issue or guaranteed securities store and trust funds. It's a guarantee. There's nothing about buy that's going broke. Uh, managed by Treasury Department, which is a... Um, yeah, so uh, investment, I'll just say that because it's not a debt, we don't owe them anything. It's it's an investment, they, they hold it in, in same as the accounts for crocs it's here. Anyway, uh, the reserve, uh, Federal Reserve holds the second largest share of U.S. Treasuries. So in other words, they have, this, they have the second most amount of reserves in our savings, uh, savings account. Um, let's see, 13 percent of U.S. Uh, total U.S. Treasury bills. Um, oh wait, I'm sorry, I'm just skipped a beat there. The Federal Reserve holds the second largest share of U.S. Treasuries, about 13 percent of total U.S. Treasury bills. Why would a country a country buy its own debt? As the U.S. Central Bank, the Federal Reserve must adjust the amount of money 
and circulation to suit the economic environment. The central bank performs this function via open market operations, buying and selling financial assets like treasury bills to add or remove money from the economy. Uh, by buying assets from banks, the Federal Reserve places new money in circulation in order to allow banks to lend more, spur business, and help uh, ec economic recovery. Excluding the Federal Reserve and Social Security, a number of other U.S. financial actors hold U.S. Treasury securities. These financial actors include state and local governments, mutual funds, insurance companies, public and private pensions, and U.S. banks. Uh, generally speaking, they will hold U.S. Uh, Treasury securities and low-risk assets. Let's see, this is from Scott Miller. The biggest effect, uh, effect of a broad-scale dump on U.S. Treasury by China would be that China would actually explore or export fewer goods to the United States. Uh, overall, foreign countries each make up a relatively small proportion of U.S. debt holders, although uh, China's holdings have represented just under 20% of Foreign-owned uh, foreign U.S. investment or savings, U.S. savings, in the, fa in the, in the past several years, this percentage only com um, comprises between 5 and 7 percent of total U.S. savings. Uh, China's holdings fell to 101.5 trillion in November of 2016, and marked the lowest level since 2010. Moreover, Japan has at times overtaken China as the largest foreign holder of U.S. reserves, or U.S. Treasuries, I should say. This has been the case since June of 2019. As, China hold, as China's holdings have fallen and Japan's have uh, risen, internationally this situation is common. Most sovereign debt is held domestically. European financial institutions hold the majority of European sovereign bonds, sovereign bonds, so, sovereign bonds. Similarly, Japan domestic financial actors hold approximately 90% of Japanese net so, uh, sovereign uh, bonds. Thus, despite international demand for U.S. sovereign debt, the United States is no, is in no, is no exception to the, uh, to the global trend. U.S. domestic actors hold the majority of U.S. sovereign bonds. So. So far, everything that I have learned from modern monetary theory, uh, whether it be policy changes, monetary changes, what interest rates do to the economy, what the lack thereof does to the economy, um, the fact that uh, Warren, Warren Moser was right and uh, Treasury is basically a savings account that has higher, uh, higher return rates. Everything MMT so far has taught me that I have looked up, that I've studied, and that I have watched has been correct, uh, and has actually uh, uh, proven to me that the that all the thoughts that I had over the past number of years about business, about money, and about where it comes from, and all that stuff, and it makes a lot more sense as far as why. Uh, the government uh, tends to give tax breaks to the big, bigger corporations because the bigger corporations have enough money to be able to turn around and put them into uh, reserves or not reserves, treasury bonds and others so that when other countries then um, uh, either get loaned or um, they buy something from us, they put that money back into treasuries. Uh, so it's not it's not it's not a debt it's an investment literally it's an investment um that's the way i'm looking at it and that's the way it should be as far as that part goes anyway uh i'd like to thank you for watching if uh if you learned anything from this i'm hoping you did uh i i was uh, conf uh everything was confirmed to me anyway um just remember that the politicians that are put into place, uh, they have a, uh, they have a ulterior motive. Uh, so if you really want uh, a new country um, with a better electoral system, uh, we better get ranked choice voting put into place everywhere in the country. As I, as I keep saying, uh, hashtag rank the country um, and get rid of this two-party system. So the two-party systems 
uh, does not do anything but divide uh, and a lot of times conquer as far as a, a global uh, society. Um, we need uh, people who are uh, experts at, at uh, I guess you would say, double book entry accounting uh, and uh, functional finance. Um, now, basically, anybody that is uh, is um, a MMT uh, expert, um, that's who we need. In, that's who we need in office uh, because a lot of times, like especially when it comes to, like uh, political uh, policies, like socialist policies. Uh, Though they are, they are basically centered around helping people out and consumers. Uh, consumers in a capitalist society uh, keep businesses open. Um, so, uh, and I've also uh, read that uh, JP Morgan Chase and others are planning on doing buybacks. So, the amount of money they've been put they've been put into uh, the banking system, they're going to be then turning around and using it to buy buy back on their own stock. So it's going to artificially go back to artificially um, pr uh, up pricing their stocks, um, and because right now people are still uh, fearing evictions, uh, too many people don't have high uh, fifteen dollar minimum wage or other type of job uh, paying jobs. The government has uh, allowed the bigger corporations to uh, to then they themselves. Uh, pick up the minimum wage uh, to keep or get uh, employees, but that largely a lot of them are not union um, because if they were a union, uh, then those unions would be able to uh, guarantee that the union, uh, union, uh, union membership get the fifteen dollar plus minimum wage for a longer period of time, even even past uh, the economic crisis right now we, we face because of COVID, the COVID virus. Uh, but right now, uh, a lot of the big corporations that I can that I know of are not unionized, or at least the unions are not that effective. Because there are unions out there that, uh, that work majority of the time to benefit the corporation and not necessarily uh, their memberships. Uh, we've seen that in Virginia, we with the uh, UAW, we've seen that with I think sometimes we with Teamsters, um, but mostly with UAW coal mines, um, coal mines, oil, gas, basically anything that's energy related, uh, they don't like unions and they spend a lot of money to break them up uh, and they do whatever it takes to do that. Uh, that's what Amazon did uh, and I believe there, I think that it was renewed calls for a union and Amazon. Because everything's been going on as far as the park goes, which I do hope they do. I uh, hope it's not a corporate uh, type of uh, union like a UAW, which I think uh, quite a few of their uh, upper echelons have um, gone to jail for uh, for uh, for fraud and and money laundering and whatnot. But um, uh, misappropriations of funds, that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, but yeah, we need we need politicians in there that. Uh, know about MMT, you know how, how how functional finance work and how uh, a a uh, a currency issuer works and not just using uh, currency. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, become a become a uh, Patreon. This is free. Uh, pretty much all of my content is free. It gives you a, a second option. But if my content is worth it, uh, I do uh, encourage you to. Uh, become a, a um, monetary subscriber. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll be back later with my news and then after that uh, I will be back on my anchor with um, uh, talking financially. Peace out for now and thank you. Uh, wear those masks and think twice about getting the vaccine. You never know. Look more into it. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying look more into it. Peace out for now.